kids, Pastor Kathy here. Today we are at Camp Eternal where we're learning all about God's Word and how to have fun with each other. This week on CP Kids, we're going to learn all about God's Word. We're going to learn how to share His Word and we're going to show it through our actions and our words. But first, let's go praise the Lord.
Stories of the Bible Joseph and his coat So this is Joseph. Hey! You see, Joseph was the son of Israel and Rachel. Israel loved Joseph more than all 12 of his sons. In fact, he made Joseph a coat to show him how much he loved him. <laughs> when Joseph's brothers saw this, they hated Joseph. <laughs> One night, Joseph had a dream. When he awoke, Joseph told the dream to his brothers. He said, Listen to this dream I had. We were gathering grain when suddenly my bundle of grain rose up and all of you bowed to me. This made his brothers hate Joseph even more. And they said, You're going to rule over us? <laughs> then Joseph had another dream. And he told it to his brothers and his father. He said, Listen, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. This time, Israel heard the dream and rebuked Joseph, saying, Will your mother and brothers and I actually come and bow down before you? The brothers were even more angry when they heard the second dream. Israel, however, decided to think about what Joseph was saying. One day, Joseph's brothers were working when they saw Joseph coming to meet them. One of his brothers mocked him and said, Here comes the dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw him away to be devoured by a ferocious animal. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. One of the brothers named Reuben wanted to rescue Joseph, so he said, Let us not take his life. Instead, throw him in the pit. Yeah. So when Joseph came to his brothers, hey. they attacked him. Yeah. They took the robe their father had given Joseph. They hoisted Joseph up and threw him into the well. Uh. Then they saw a group of men from Midian coming towards them. Judah thought it would be a good idea to sell Joseph to these men. So the brothers sold Joseph to the merchants for 20 shekels. The brothers then took the coat of many colors back to their father and made him believe that Joseph had been killed. Israel wept for his son, whom he loved. Meanwhile, Joseph was taken as a slave to Egypt to work in the house of a man named Potiphar. For Joseph's story was only just beginning. Dot, I'm ready on this end. Careful. Careful. Hey, Mike. Let's go on. Do you remember what happened last year about this time? Right. We lost all those connection transmissions. Yep. Like that. 90 days of work, gone. Well, Dot's determined not to let that happen again. All right. I need everybody to be quiet. Now, Harper, you can do this. One down, 28 to go. This could be a long day. Yeah. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Alyssa, and this is the time we learned about our purpose. Welcome back to Connect HQ, Bree. Thanks so much, Captain Alyssa. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to have an official tour of Connect HQ. And you're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Now, is something wrong? Well, I was gonna have Tony give you the tour today, but he's had a bad cold for a while now. Yeah, I talked to him yesterday. He sounded awful. He could like barely talk. Well, 
I don't want to keep you waiting, so Mike, if you wouldn't mind. I would love to give Bree the tour. <sighs> great, thanks Mike. I've got some postcards I need to get to, so I'll catch up with you in a little bit. Absolutely. Okay, have a great time, Bree. I'm sure I will. All right, where to start? Where do we start first? Mm. Oh, hi, uh, welcome to Connect HQ. How can I help you? <laughs> oh, at a loss for words. I get you, buddy. I was speechless the first time I saw Connect HQ. All right, how about you join me and Bree on our tour of the building? It'll be a blast, I promise. All right, you two, follow me. <laughs> and the next stop on our tour is the lounge. This is where you can get a bite to eat, hang out, take a breather, get another bite to eat. Hi, I'm Dot. You're Bree, right? That's right. <laughs> and you are? Well, that's right, we haven't gotten your name. What's your name? Huh? Oh, I get it. It's coffee, so your name is Joe, like a cup of Joe. Mm. I'm Mike. <laughs> get it? I'm Dot. And I'm Bree, like this cheese. Nice to meet you, Joe. Dot, would you explain a little bit to uh, Bree and Joe about what we do here at Connect HQ? Definitely. At Connect HQ, together we live out God's mission. Together we live out God's mission. That's our purpose. We all work together to help kids and adults overcome the problems that they're facing. We want to share God's truth with the world and let everyone know how much He loves us. So, in a nutshell, that means whoever you are, we're here to help. I could not have said it better myself. What do you think of that, Joe? Whoa, is that Tony's vest? And there's a big coffee stain on it. You're right. If you poured coffee on yourself, it would still burn even if you're wearing a vest. You're right. We should try to clean out the coffee stain for Tony. Mike, would you take down the vest to the laundry? I'm on it. Keep Bree and Joe busy while I take care of this. I'll be back in a sec. You've got it. Oh, no, 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 no. No, that, that's Tony's coffee. Tony's coffee. Yeah. Hey Mike, how's the tour going? I think it's going pretty well. I think Joe and Bree are really enjoying themselves. Joe? Who's Joe? Nah, he's a walk-in, doesn't talk much. I think he's a nice guy, though. <sighs> hey, you haven't seen Tony around, have you? No, I thought he was sick. I thought so too, but then I got an email saying he was gonna come in after all. Well, I'll tell you if I see him. I gotta get back to the tour. All right, thanks, Mike. <gasps> I know this one. Rodney and Vanessa are part of this group. It's the... The Skit Vision Group. That's right. What are you three up to? I was just introducing Joe and Bree to the other groups that are part of Connect HQ. That's a great idea. Joe, pay attention. You'll learn something. Could you tell me the names of the other groups? The Skit Vision Group's the only one I've heard so far. Well, you would have to work here to know all of them, but I'll do my best. So, there is the Whatnots Group. There is the Beat Doctors. There is the Tekken Tools. There is the Rad Group. There is the foodies group, and the good news group. Wow, you are a really good guesser. But all of these groups make disciples. Mm -hmm. Making disciples is another way of saying what our mission is. It's the Great Commission. Tell me more about this. What is the Great Commission? There's a Bible theater in our archives that does a great job of answering this question. <laughs> I know the exact video you're talking about, Dot. Bree, Dot, Joe, you wanna check this out? I'm game. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. Is alive. Hey, Winston. Want to take a trip? Sure, Vanessa. Where are we going? Anywhere you want. Uh, well, okay. 
How about uh, Paris, France? God, good choice. Wow. Oh my goodness. Bonjour, oui, oui, je ne comprends pas. I can smell the croissants. Oh, I could eat croissants all day. Mm -hmm. But really, though, what should we do while we're here? Let's get some french fries! Oh, you would say that. <laughs> All right. Winston, that's a good idea, but I was actually thinking we could make some disciples. Uh, how do you do that? Look at these verses that I found in the book of Matthew. This was right after Jesus came back to life. He said, so you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Cool, let's do it. <laughs> uh, but before we do, what's a disciple again? All right, that's a good question and I probably should have started there, but a disciple is a word that means student or learner. And how do we make them? Well, we make them just like Jesus made them. Jesus made disciples by spending time with people, teaching them things, and praying together. He showed them what God's love is like, and he showed them how to be free from sin. I thought Jesus was the only one who could make someone a disciple. Anyone can make disciples, literally anyone. Like me? Kids, adults, even you, anyone. Anyone can make disciples. It's up to us, you, me, you guys, everyone to go all over the world teaching the good news about God with everyone we know. From Paris, to the school, to the mall, to the jungle, to the stadium, to the moon. Wow, I can smell the moon cheese. It doesn't matter where we go, Winston. Jesus says he will always be with us. He says, you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Jesus goes with us as we tell others about him. That's a great promise. Jesus gives us the power to make disciples. Exactly. We tell the people we know, they'll tell the people they know, they'll tell the people they know, then 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 they'll tell the people they know. Where should we start? Oh, how, how about let's go to Belgium. Oh, we can get some waffles. You would say that. <gasps> oh, we could go to Turkey. Ooh. I'm gonna stop you right there because maybe we should just go to the grocery store. It sounds like you're really hungry. <gasps> hungry, let's go there. <laughs> we could go anywhere. <laughs> It's a huge calling to go out and make disciples everywhere. But we follow Jesus, and that's what he asked us to do. It's amazing, really. Every day you get to share Jesus with the whole world. And one of the ways we get to share Jesus is through connection transmissions. Right. Tell me more about how those transmissions work. I think Harper is making transmission today. She's up in the observatory if you want to talk to her. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Bree, Joe, to the observatory! <laughs> Joe. Welcome to the observatory. And this is Harper. Hey Harper, I'm Bree. Wow, would you look at that view? It's incredible. It sounds like the tour is going well. It is. Oh, and this is Joe. You look like a friend of mine. <laughs> We heard you were working on a connection transmission. Do you think you could give us the details about how those transmissions work? How about I show you how transmissions work? Even better. <laughs> Every connection transmission starts with a question. We get all kinds of questions from people all around the world. Some come from postcards, some come from field offices, and some come from walk-ins. Then we find our links. Links are what we use to answer questions. The groups at Connect HQ help us find them. There are three links we look for, point links, First links and Bible links. Then we use a drone to capture our connection transmission. Transmissions answer the questions we're asked using the links we find. I'm sure you would be able to make a great connection transmission. The next time Connect HQ is looking for a new team member, you should apply.
One of the coolest things about working at Connect HQ is that we all get to use our unique talents and gifts to support each other and answer the big questions. It's not easy to do anything alone. That's why it's awesome we have this building full of people who support each other. And I've got a great verse that goes along with that idea. Do you want to say it with me? Of course. Let's do it. All right. It's from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Say it with me like this. Ecclesiastes 4, 12. Ecclesiastes 4, 12. Though one may be overpowered, Though one, one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. Two can defend, defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And what that verse tells us is that we don't need to go at life alone. We all need God's help, and we all need to work together with others. By listening, supporting, and encouraging one another, friends help us stay strong and do what God has called us to do. <sighs> wow, Connect HQ really is amazing. Thank you for giving us this tour, you guys. Of course. <sighs> All right, what about you, Joe? Did you have a good time? <sighs> All right, let's head downstairs and finish up this tour. Okay. For the last part of our tour, I thought about introducing you to the Connect HQ members you didn't get to meet today. Perfect, thanks, Mike. Uh, this is Kat. This is Edison, this is Jake, and this is Tony! Yeah! Huh? What? What's going on? <sighs> Joe's trying to tell us something, but I'm not sure what it is. Mike, this is Tony. Yeah, this is Tony. That's correct. <sighs> okay. This is Tony. Yes. Uh-huh, right here, right here. And... This is Tony, without a beard, okay? They're the same person. This is Tony. Yeah. Oh, I miss Joe. He was such a good guy. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. You could still be Joe. It's just a name change. Hi, my name is Dot and I wanted to share a verse with you. It's from the book of Ecclesiastes. Say it with me like this. Ecclesiastes 4, 12. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. It is not good to go through life by yourself. You need friends to help and support you as you do what God's called you to do. As followers of Christ, we have a huge calling to go out and make disciples everywhere in the world. But that's more than just one person can handle on their own. We need to work together to share the love of Jesus with the whole world. We all have a mission to help each other work together and make disciples. That's what we get to do every day here at Connect HQ. We love serving each other and helping people with their problems. That's our purpose. You have a purpose too. Each one of you has unique gifts and talents that God has given you. You could try to use those gifts alone, but that's no fun. It's better when we work together. All of us can support each other and show God's love to the world. Together, we live out God's mission. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. I don't know, I'm still not seeing it. That's a little better. Mm. Hey, there you are, buddy. Hey, uh, where, hey, Joe, what, hey, Tony. Joe, what are you doing here? We all know our purpose here at Connect HQ. That's because we follow Jesus with our lives. We've all made that choice. And if you've never chosen to follow Jesus, you can do that today. All you have to remember are your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, Tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. Did you make that choice? 
If so, be sure to talk about it with a parent or leader you trust. Hey kids, we really had a lot of fun this week at Camp Eternal learning about God's love, learning about quiet time, the importance of quiet time. And it's through that quiet time that God shares with us what he wants us to do, such as reaching out to this particular friend or helping that friend. So remember, get away from the crowd. Spend some time with God and share his love through your words and through your actions. Okay, till next time. See you later. Bye. Hey Club 56, we're having a blast with you this week. Hey Club 56, we're having a blast with you this week. Can't wait to see you Sunday. Bye. Hey Club 56, thanks for letting us hang out this week and have great fun and learn about Jesus. We love you and we are so blessed that you guys let us be a part of this. Hey Club 56, we are having a blast with you guys at Camp Eternal. Today on The Loop, we're going to learn about what do you do when you have conflict? You know, the kind of drama that is not theater? We need to seek God and He will help us reach higher Three, in the sky. Two, but first, let's one. praise the Lord. That's a Snapchat. Boomerang with the praise in the right back. Man, we hide in the sky, no turn back. If it be a last night, leave it all here. No fear, be clear, this is your year. Let go of anything that isn't God's steer. By Zine with the dream, man, it's so clear. Yeah, so clear. And you know, wherever you go, I'ma stick close. They gon' think we a duo. Bond so tight, hug it out like a sumo. And I never think twice, you the boss of my life. No, you go. And this world not down with us. They can try to limit faith, but it's down to us. Man, love so deep, not a game to us. When the blessing comes down, man, the praise go up.
They won't come out of their dressing rooms. What? Why? They're fighting. Who's going to open the show? Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. See what I mean? Yeah, they won't come out of their dressing rooms. There's a lot of drama going on here today. Yeah, normally, you know, they're friends. I don't know, something's going on. Something big. Listen, could you get over here and mediate as soon as possible? Thanks. They're sending someone over. Cut to Kirby. Hey there everyone, in case you don't know who I am, I know, not a familiar face. I'm Kirby Minnick, also known as Kirby is a Boss on YouTube. You can go check it out, I put out all kinds of really awesome Christian content. Hey there YouTube, my name's Kirby is a Boss. Welcome to my room, welcome to my channel. I'm going to give all of you some tips, some tricks. Loyal friends are hard to come by. Memes truly are my love language. Yes, I stink and love memes, I'm a meme queen. But the reason why I'm here today is because I wanna talk about drama. You're welcome. For the entire month, we're gonna cover friendship drama, we're gonna cover family drama, we're gonna cover more than friendship drama. At some point in our lives, we are going to experience friendship drama. Maybe someone didn't invite you to their birthday party or you heard your friends talking about you behind your back. When I was in middle school, I wanted to audition for the talent show with my best friends. We all agreed to do it and at the last minute, they all bailed on me. And I was so hurt by that. I really had to work on my own heart on forgiveness them because I cared way more about my friends than trying to be right. So I kind of want to dive into that topic today of what it looks like to forgive, to bring peace to a situation, and why friendships truly matter. Today in the kitchen, we are making a friendship drama sundae. Step one, start with two scoops of ice cream to represent two best friends, together forever. Two scoops of BFF. Step two, let's heat things up and pour on the hot fudge. Crank up the heat as high as you can because this hot, hot fudge will test this friendship real good. Burn, baby, burn. Step three, as the fudge cools, gossip about the Sunday. Write mean things about your Sunday in a note and pass it to someone other than the Sunday. Make sure the Sunday sees you giggling and passing the note. Step four, Host a birthday party and do not invite your Sunday. Pour salt into the wound by laughing about it and pouring salt onto your Sunday. <laughs> Step five. Since more people have been added to this drama, add more scoops. As the drama spins out of control, so should the amount of scoops in your dish. Your friendship was based on ice cream, but by this point you can add any and all scoops. Don't discount your canned meats. Step six, top your friendship with fake apologies. Sorry. The idea is to make your friendship someday look pretty, but taste pretty awful. Use inedible things like glitter, thumbtacks, or glue. Step seven, ask your Sunday, are we still friends? Are we still friends? If the answer is no, complete with cherry. If the answer is yes, find an item the Sunday values most. Break it in front of the Sunday. Insist it was an accident when it clearly wasn't. Then complete with cherry. Build your friendship Sunday with this kind of drama and it will quickly melt into bitterness soup. For a friendship Sunday without all the drama, follow this recipe. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Forgiveness is the cherry on top of any good friendship.
All right, I'm here from the law offices of Henderson and Tate, and I will fight to find you peace. You deserve mediation. I don't need mediation. He's the one that needs mediating. Uh, if anyone needs mediation, it's you. Got a dispute with a longtime friend and or coworker? The law offices of Henderson and Tate can resolve any conflict. Tell her to apologize. Whatever, you apologize. I thought we were friends. I didn't go to night school to get my degree in arguments. I got my degree in peaceful resolution, and I believe I can make you friends again. Yeah, that would be a Christmas miracle. You're getting nothing but coal for Christmas this year. What did you say? You heard me. Enough! The first step in restoring a broken friendship is to identify where the breakdown is so we can use forgiveness to pick that breakdown in the teeth. There, that is where the breakdown is. You're a breakdown. Uh, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Call me Tom. Tom Tate of Henderson and Tate. Tom, she just called me a breakdown. If we're supposed to be restoring a friendship, is name calling allowed? Name calling's out of bounds. It's true though, he's the one who started this whole fight. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Nuh-uh. Yeah, huh? <sighs> I've got my work cut out for me, but that's all right. I get paid by the hour. While I teach these two a little bit more about talking with respect, check this out. I'm full of respect. I was born respectful. Stay in your- You know many things can make or mar a friendship. How would you react to this next scene? What is it? Well, it's kind of a secret. Oh, you know, you always can trust me. You won't tell anyone? Not a soul, promise. Well, my father's got a new job. I may have to move away, I'm afraid. Oh, Joe, gosh, I'm sorry. So am I. But, but please don't tell anyone because it's not definite yet. Cross my heart, I won't say a word. You won't tell so, but I just heard the most terrible thing. Joe's father lost his job, mm. and they have to get out of the house right away and move to another town. They haven't got enough to eat anymore. That escalated quickly. I mean, if you were to really look at what she did, how she went into the next room and was telling everybody all about Joe's secret, when we think about friendship, we want loyalty, we want trust, and I don't know if she really makes the cut. What do you think? How would you feel if you found out that your best friend went around and told everybody your secrets? Oh my gosh, I need to tell you the biggest secret and you can't tell anybody. Oh my gosh, yes, you can tell me anything. I am here for you, girl. What's up, what's up? I think that I like Josh and I don't know what to do. Okay, trust me, I won't tell anyone, all right? Hey, Josh! Guess what I just heard? Are you kidding me? Are you the kind of person that when someone shares something with you, you go around and tell everybody? These are things that make or break a friendship, so we should consider them. Okay, Ricky, why don't you read your letter first? Thank you, I would love to go mm -hmm. first. Jamie, when someone gets a new hat, the polite thing to do is to comment on the new hat. Sometimes it feels like you are selfish. Sincerely, Ricky. Now, Jamie, why don't you read your letter? Ricky, I have other friends too. Just because I choose to sit next to other people at lunch doesn't mean we're not friends anymore. It feels like you don't want me to have any other friends and that's selfish. Warmest regards, Jamie. Now, Jamie, do you understand why Ricky thinks you're selfish? I guess so. Is that hat new? No, it's old. So when were you wearing a new hat? Last month. I missed that. And Ricky, do you understand why Jamie thinks you can be a little possessive? I don't think she used those exact words. It was implied. Do you think Jamie was saying nothing about your hat to hurt your feelings on purpose? No. No, I don't. And Jamie, do you think Ricky's trying to hurt your feelings when he wants to sit with you at lunch? No, that'd be ridiculous. Mistakes were made, but that doesn't mean you're mean people. You both get a little something called the benefit of the doubt. Don't assume the worst, assume the best of your best friend. That's a good point. Tom, I think our friendship is restored. Not quite yet. There's one more thing this friendship needs before I can give it the official Henderson and Tate seal of approval. What's that? Forgiveness. Forgiveness brings peace and peace restores all things. Jamie, will you forgive me for getting all crazy about your lunch plans? As long as you can forgive me for not paying attention to your interests. Deal. Yay for peace! Want to grab lunch? Yeah. Great. Wait, there's some paperwork you need to fill out if you don't mind before you make any lunch plans. There you go. So all of this? All of it. The word peace is common in most languages. People can talk about peace treaties or times of peace. It means the absence of war. 
And in the Bible, the word peace can refer to the absence of conflict, but it also points to the presence of something better in its place. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. And in the New Testament, the Greek word is eirene. The most basic meaning of shalom is complete or whole. The word can refer to a stone that has a perfect whole shape with no cracks. It can also refer to a completed stone wall that has no gaps and no missing bricks. Shalom refers to something that's complex with lots of pieces that's in a state of completeness, wholeness. It's like Job who says his tents are in a state of shalom because he counted his flock and no animals are missing. This is why shalom can refer to a person's well-being. Like when David visited his brothers on the battlefield, he asked about their shalom. The core idea is that life is complex, full of moving parts and relationships and situations. And when any of these is out of alignment or missing, your shalom breaks down. Life is no longer whole. It needs to be restored. In fact, that's the basic meaning of shalom when you use it as a verb. To bring shalom literally means to make complete or restore. So Solomon brings shalom to the unfinished temple when he completes it. Or if your animal accidentally damages your neighbor's field, you shalom them by giving them a complete repayment for their loss. You take what's missing and you restore it to wholeness. The same goes for human relationships. In the book of Proverbs, to reconcile and heal a broken relationship is to bring shalom. And when rival kingdoms make shalom in the Bible, it doesn't just mean they stop fighting, it also means they start working together for each other's benefit. This state of shalom is what Israel's kings were supposed to cultivate, and it rarely happened. So the prophet Isaiah, he looked forward to a future king, a prince of shalom, and his reign would bring shalom with no end. A time when God would make a covenant of shalom with his people and make right all wrongs and heal all that's been broken. This is why Jesus' birth in the New Testament was announced as the arrival of Irene. Remember, that's the Greek word for peace. Jesus came to offer his peace to others, like when he said to his followers, my peace I give to you all. The apostles claimed that Jesus made peace between messed up humans and God when he died and rose from the dead. The idea is that he restored to wholeness the broken relationship between humans and their creator. This is why the Apostle Paul can say Jesus himself is our Irene. He was the whole complete human that I am made to be but have failed to be. And now he gives me his life as a gift. And this means that Jesus' followers are now called to create peace. Paul instructed local churches to keep their unity through the bond of peace, which requires humility and patience and bearing with others in love. Becoming people of peace means participating in the life of Jesus, who reconciled all things in heaven on earth, restoring peace through his death and resurrection. So peace takes a lot of work because it's not just the absence of conflict. True peace requires taking what's broken and restoring it to wholeness, whether it's in our lives, our relationships, or in our world. And that's the rich biblical concept of peace. So what is it that we do when we have friendship drama? Well, the first thing that we should do is stop and talk. We shouldn't avoid the issue because that just musters up more grudges and anger towards people. When we take the time to actually confront the person and confront the issue, let them know how we're feeling, how it affected us, and we seek to restore and bring peace to that situation, my friends, that's when we're going to see uh, communion take place. That's when we're going to see the body of Christ at work. That's when we are going to see us bringing that same shalom that Jesus brought when he forgave us. I don't know if you remember this, but we are also sinners and we need that grace and we need that mercy extended to us. One thing that I love that Paul says in the Bible, and if you don't know who Paul is, he is one of the greatest apostles to ever live. And he wrote this to us while he was in prison. In the book of Colossians chapter three, verses 13 through 14, he says, make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. And verse 14, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Now that very first part right here, it says make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you. When we keep that into perspective, all that we have done and all of that mercy and grace that God has shown us, it's so easy to extend that to other people. Because at the end of the day, 
when we think of God's mercy, we want people to experience that peace and that wholeness. So let's extend that to other people, seek to restore those friendships and to be the first one to extend forgiveness because that will lead to peace. Mm -hmm. yep. This is a lot of paperwork, Tom. Well, you focus on the paperwork and I'll do the outro. We fight for you so you can fight for your friendships. Ever been injured by a friendship or hurt by someone else? Call for peace. Your friendships need less drama and more forgiveness. Okay, initial there. And there. Mm -hmm. And there. Mm -hmm. There we go, hey. good. Can we say a catchphrase now? We're all contractually obligated to say it together. Here we go. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the ride. ride! When there's friendship drama, we will be the first to forgive. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for the fact that you have given us friends, that you've given us the ability to know other people who care about us and we can care for them. And we thank you for the fact that when there's drama, when things get messy or complicated, that we can follow your example and choose to forgive them the same way that you've forgiven us. Hey guys, God called us to get along with each other and he also asked for us to give each other grace. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 13 and 14 to make allowances for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And remember, enjoy the ride. We gotta, we gotta act like we were. Okay, 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 okay. Well, <laughs> Has life got you down? <laughs>